Hey Kipsters, it's Mr. Frederick. This is math video number three. Uh, it's been great to hear from teachers about all of you working hard this week with your videos or with Lexia or Zern online. Let's keep it up. Um, today in math video number three, we're gonna do some math routines problems, just like in videos one and two, and then we'll do our problem of the day. So let's get started on our math routines. Now as we do these, uh, if you haven't seen videos one and two, uh, I will go ahead and show the problems on a PowerPoint just like we do at school usually. Um, and after each problem, I'll pause to let, give you a minute to answer. Uh, and then I'll share the answer so you can see that you're on the right track. Here we go. All right, let's get started. Here's our first problem, three times eight. That's 24. Seven times six. 42. Nine times what number is the same as 45? That question mark would be a five. Nine times five is 45. Three times n equals 27. What is the variable n equal to? n would be nine because three times nine is 27. 80 divided by 10 equals what? That'd be 8. 49 divided by 7 is 7. 32 divided by what number is the same as 4? To solve this one, you could roll your 4s and see how many 4s are needed to get to 32. Question mark would be eight. Now we have a fractions problem. It says, what fraction is shaded? And what fraction is unshaded? So let's answer the shaded question first. What fraction is shaded? I see two circles, and each circle has three equal parts. So we're working with the fraction of thirds. Now what's tricky about this problem is we have two holes instead of just one hole. So I have one, two, three, four, five, five thirds, or five over three. Or you could say that one and two thirds is shaded. What is unshaded? So that would be the part that's white still. That's just one third, because it's one piece out of the three holes. So one third is unshaded. Here's our next problem. This is a fraction problem on the number line. So what fraction is point D? There's D right there. And as you're solving this, notice that here is zero and here is one. So what fraction is point D? To solve this, you need to notice that you have one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces between zero and one. So our interval is six. So here's one sixth. D is at two over six, or two sixths. That would be the fraction for point D. Here's a number, number bond problem. 60 and what number is the same as 370? Our question mark would be 310. And our last problem today for math routines is a time problem. So it says, is the time shown on the clock, is that closer to one o'clock or two o'clock? Is the time that's shown here closer to one o'clock or two o'clock? So in solving this, I noticed that the hour hand is right here and the minute hand is on the five. So this looks like the hour hand is a little bit past one and then I'm gonna count by fives to figure out how many minutes I have, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So this is 125. 
125 is closer to 1 o'clock. It would be closer to 2 o'clock as soon as this minute hand went past the 6. Then it would be closer to 2 o'clock. So this is still closer to 1 o'clock. All right. That's it for math routines today. Now let's do our problem of the day. Our problem of the day today is going to be some review of area and perimeter. Here it is. So our problem says, what is the area and the perimeter of the rectangle below? What is the area and the perimeter of the rectangle below? Now to solve this, I have a ruler and I'm going to show you that the length of this rectangle is 7 inches. And the width of this rectangle is 6 inches. And that's all I'm going to tell you to solve this problem. So you need to be able to see from the 7 inches in length and the 6 inches in width, what is the area and the perimeter of this rectangle? And from here, you can have your pencil and your paper and pause the video and show your work. And then when you're ready, push play again and we'll solve the problem together. All right, let's solve our problem of the day together. So our problem again was, what is the area and the perimeter of the rectangle below? And the problem gave us that our length was seven inches and our width was six inches. Now, the first thing that you should do in solving a problem like this is you, you know that this is a rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and write in the length on the other side of this rectangle. If this length is seven inches, I know this length is seven inches. I'm also going to write in the width. If this width is 6 inches, I know that this width is 6 inches. The next thing I'm going to solve for is the perimeter. So I'm going to put a P here for perimeter. And to solve perimeter, I know perimeter is the distance all the way around the outside of my rectangle. So I need to add 7 plus six plus seven plus six. If I add all of those sides up, I'm going to get the perimeter. Now I know that seven plus six is the same as 13. So I'm gonna solve this problem by grouping 13 and 13. And now I know that 13 plus 13, I have two tens, so that's 20, and three ones and three ones, that's six. So I know that my perimeter is 26, and don't forget your units, this is inches, 26 inches. Now the problem also asked me to solve for area. Now, you'll remember from school that area is the same as length times the width. So I know my length was seven inches and I'm gonna multiply that by six inches And that's going to give me my area, seven times six. You could roll your numbers if you didn't remember what seven times six was. I know that seven times six is the same as 42. And I'm gonna make sure that I have 42 inches squared because this is area. I'm talking about how many square inches. It would look like this if I drew one of them in. How many of those would fill the area of this whole rectangle? And it would be 42 
square inches. All right, that's our problem of the day today. Hope you enjoyed it and grew your math brain a little bit. Um, thanks for joining us. Keep working hard. Let your teachers know if you have any questions or if you need anything. Bye-bye.